Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Chad, the one, the only, the handsome, the egotistical. And this week, another textbook review. Currently, I'm in just the throes. I'm in the trenches of the psalm of, of midterms. And thus, I kind of needed something that would not take up my entire day, because I have two papers. <laughs> that are due. But I still want to get a video out for you guys. In fact, this technically was supposed to be last week's video, but Amazon for some reason thought it'd be cool to be eight days late. Either way, they were fun to be, so I guess, but by happenstance, this video is sponsored by Amazon. Finally, a sponsorship on this channel. It only took 14,000 subscribers to get one. For good luck, let's uh, rub Jeff Bezos' head and uh, jump right into this week's book review. I'm sure you guys have seen the cover and that uh, tells a thousand more words than I'll ever be able to say in these videos even though I say thousands of nonsensical words that don't make sense in English or Japanese. We are reviewing uh, re Reviewing Japanese for dummies and I will say this before I get into the actual hands-on review it genuinely surprised me There were things that I was like, oh, this will be like Rosetta Stone and I looked into it and I was like, huh There's there's more to this book than meets the eye. So take a gander. We'll get hands-on view now over to table chat And I'll we'll see you guys at the outro Okay. Alrighty boys, you know what time it is. This is Japanese for dummies, which means it's for me and possibly you and uh, Maybe mr. Mittens here who is not helps quite who is not helping me today. Now, I would be completely amiss if I did not say I, upon receiving this book, had some biases. I'm sure you guys are like me and probably put this into the category of like a Rosetta Stone. And me being honest, I probably have the same preconceptions, mostly because of stuff that the cover says. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, this very first point, speak conversational Japanese with ease uh, for pretty much anyone that has been studying Japanese long enough to be what most of us would consider conversationally fluent in the language. That's, that's a lofty statement, but I feel like it doesn't have to be. I feel like that one stops you from looking at the book objectively. You can see, master the basic grammar, verb conjugations, vocabulary, and pronunciations. And I don't know anyone that would disagree that the book does not explain these in just as good a detail as any other book. Uh, identify kana and kanji. It doesn't say all the kana and kanji. It doesn't say the kana and kanji for a JLPT level. This isn't a JLPT book. And nowhere in the advertising that I can find in this book does it say otherwise. In fact, if you guys see this about section here, you're gonna see the section that says, Japanese for dummies, second edition, can help you whether you want to be familiar with Japanese because you're planning a trip to my island nation homeland, because the guy's from there, uh, because you deal with Japanese companies at work, or because your new neighbor is Japanese and you want to be able to say good morning to her. That, my friends, is the barometer of which I'll be judging this book. Now, of course, I'll be comparing it to other beginner textbooks, but this is not claiming to be the once and for all, like, this is how you learn all of the language like a Rosetta Stone is. This is just meaning frankly, what it says on the front. You're mastering basic grammar, verb conjugations, vocabulary, and pronunciations, uh, although the pronunciations don't make me feel that confident with the book, uh, as well as identifying some of the alphabet. And I think that that is a fair barometer to see, does this book meet that recommendation? And if it does, then, well, for the price and, and what this book is, who is this book for? My opinions, I'll give it at the end, but let's, let's take a look at it together. Let's have a hands-on this squeaky clean hands on. And as I'm cracking this book uh, to get into it to show you guys, I do wanna say one thing before I begin. I do this with all my book reviews. Go support the author. If you guys enjoyed this review and you want to purchase this book, uh, please consider supporting them in real life. I will only be showing you the pieces of the book that I have notes on off screen. That is necessary for me to give a good explanation of the book and a good criticism of the book, uh, but I'm not showing you by any means the totality of this book and I don't want you guys to ever pirate anything, so please, 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 if you like this, feel free to pay for it. Uh, in fact, there are about 30 of these on Amazon right now used for like $7. In fact, that's where I got this one. I got mine for like six bucks from a charity on Amazon where all the money went to some sort of education charity in Phoenix. So yeah, you should go support them if this seems like it's a book for you. If not, enjoy the free content and the little snapshot of something that maybe uh, you're not used to, something that is new to all of us. But my first impressions, the very first thing uh, that I encountered was I actually don't mind the format of this book as much as I thought I would. It sounds kind of weird, like I was expecting this to be just awful and such a slow rambling mess, but I actually preferred the format of this to the actual Tai Kim books. It's really not that bad. There are a lot of things that I don't like. 
For instance, uh, as you can see, you basically have the Japanese saying of any particular thing on the side here. All of this Japanese is basically both hiragana, katakana, and kanji, with no furigana for beginners, but it does give you romanji, and then also the weird uh, phonetic pronunciation in English, and then the English definition. Compared to, let's say, a Genki, which tends to be most people's kind of beginner inlet, or either that or a Mina no Nihongo or something like that, you would normally get, yeah, you would get that, but where this bold black is, where it's basically, I guess, what is supposed to replace the kana section of the Genki books, not that this was trying to be a replacement for Genki, but like these would actually just be straight up kana, and then you wouldn't even have the phonetic pronunciation, then you would have the actual romanji for it, and then you would have the English. So the book does this, it never gives you furigana, it never gives you the straight up kana to go with the kanji. Again, as someone who takes a lot of pride in learning Japanese, I find that to be a waste. I feel like you could, I mean, frankly, it just gives you another instance on learning densha and then using your Japanese to read the phonetic alphabet there. And then you can still have the romanji after it. It's just, I feel like this is not necessarily meant for me. And this is one of the indicators that I feel like for the real serious Japanese learner, obviously this is probably not the thing. But one thing that this is showing me is, let's say my grandma, for instance. If I was going to Japan and she found out that I was going to Japan and she wanted to actually show up, she wanted to come, I would probably not recommend her the stuff that I used to start because I wanted a really solid foundation. Like, I want to know how all sentences come together and how I can form all of my own stuff. But my grandma, frankly, doesn't want to know that. I'm sure she might just want to order a beer in Japan or be able to say hello to my friends when she meets them. Uh, maybe she's traveling around on her own. Like, let's, I don't know why she would go there without me, but maybe she's trying to go out there on her own and she just wants to show that she's putting an effort with the locals. I would recommend this book 10 times over Genki for that. Simply because, you know, it's not complicating the stuff with too much Japanese as if she's trying to get used to Kana. And most of this book you'll see as, as you kind of go throughout it, uh, seems to be aimed at people that really aren't looking for any type of written fluency or any type of uh, written ability or even to read, to be quite frank with you. It seems like almost everything in here uh, was made for someone who is learning the language to speak it on maybe a trip. Like, I'll show you right here is a talking section. And in these talking sections, there is zero kana, kanji, and anything that has to do with Japanese like there is uh, on any of the other systems that are like teaching you the word itself. Uh, all of the talking sections where they do talking practice is literally just Romanji in English, which is fine. Like, it's not a problem, but you can clearly see what this book is made for, right? These are casual tourists of Japan, uh, like the front said, like talking to a Japanese neighbor for a second to say hi or whatever. And it's laid out in a format that honestly, if, if my parents were gonna come to Japan with me and wanted to, to learn a little something, or, you know, my brothers or sisters, maybe you guys have that hip aunt that somehow hit the jackpot and now she wants to go over, she wants to travel the world in one of the places is Japan. This is a really thoughtful gift because you're thinking not only of, oh, she wants to learn Japanese, but she's probably not gonna try and learn it like how maybe you and me might learn it. And so she's just trying to talk to people. She's just trying to get around a city. She's just trying to remember some set phrases to do that. And because this is so much cheaper than the vast majority of like all the textbooks that you're gonna see nowadays, uh, most of them are like 30 to 40 bucks outside of Japan and 20 to 30 inside of Japan. This isn't a bad option, especially since this thing like is everywhere. The market for this when it came out was huge, so there's so many used books that you can get. You could pr I found these at uh, ARC thrift stores for like next to nothing, but uh, you can even get them like six or seven dollars used on Amazon. And this is used by the way, like you can see that there's no highlighter marks, no one's notes are in these, the pages aren't torn up. Uh, the, it really only has smudges for me because I'm an animal. I think for what it is, it is completely fair. And as for the content, I'm sure you guys are, are wondering what exactly you can expect from how full this is. Um, and I was also fairly surprised when I found out everything that's in here. It is actually pretty close to what's in Genki 1. I think Genki 1 has a few pieces that this doesn't have. But all in all, this is more or less a Genki 1 for $7, which is huge for people that are like hyper budget learners, like how I was when I first started uh, before I took the red pill of Japanese language learning. This is not far off from how much that cost. And I also have a little spreadsheet here to give you some perspective on this. Hopefully you guys could see these two pages. Uh, I, I think I'm a white balance set, right? But I essentially went through and compared the Genki One book, which if you guys are not aware of what Genki One is, it tends to be the big 
uh, the big name in the beginner Japanese game. I have a review for this on my channel if you'd also like to check out that way, as well as the four dumbzizzes uh, <laughs> that I'm reviewing today. And just on these top two matters, if the grammar is more or less the same, which it should be, it shouldn't be that much different, then we're going off the other things that they have. Four Dummies has 30% more vocabulary than the Genki One book has. 30%! Like, that's not insignificant. That's a ton of vocabulary for people to learn. Although, I will say without the, uh, the Furigana, or frankly, just the format that this vocab's in, it's a little iffy if you want to actually go the distance in Japanese. But for, again, a traveler, that's pretty dang significant for one $7 book. Uh, the other thing that I found out that was interesting is the kanji, right? So Genki uh, is trying to be kind of a foundational book, and 200 kanjis in the first book is not really bad at all. Like, 200's pretty good. Uh, most things you're gonna see like a bridge in Japan that's, you know, has the, the word tree in it, even though you're not gonna be able to read that it's a bridge or anything else that's in it. You know, you're gonna be able to, to kind of act cool with your friends and go, I know that means tree, so this, this bridge probably has something to do with a tree, and then you look to the side of the bridge and you see a tree and you go, oh, it's probably named after that tree, even though it's probably not. But you can act like that, you can act like you're that cool, and that's kind of why people buy the $30 Genki book, uh, but for seven, you're really only getting maybe 30 kanji. I think it was more than that, but I'll, I'll level with you. It's probably only 30 kanji. And it, it really, obviously, the book is not trying to be any sort of a, a reading proficiency book. You're not going to get very good at reading anything with this, uh, but that's not what this is saying. You have listening practice with a real CD, uh, conversational Japanese, so it means that's, you know, kind of how you're speaking. Uh, and then pronunciations, vocabulary, verb, and grammar for speaking. I think that this is primarily a speaking book rather than any type of literary proficiency that might come about it. Also, fun fact about this book that I thought was hysterical. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, this is a DVD that comes in the back of all of these. And this seal, there's like a slit in the side of this that if you look at what the manufacturer has on this, he has a label saying, by breaking the seal of the software packet, you accept the terms and conditions of the end user license agreement. So pretty much when you break this, you're, you're declaring that you agree to not like pirate this or anything. But the last person that had that found a, uh, a good go around in that he doesn't have to break the seal if he can rip out the side. So I guess technically I'm legally allowed to pirate this as much as I want because I, I did not agree to your license agreement, sir. I would say that alone, when I saw that, was worth the $7 to me. That that made me laugh heartily. Another thing that I personally did not like, I mean, some of the nice things, I'll give you guys this. They do have uh, a decent amount of listening practice in the CD tracks. They also have some of these really nice charts here on the back side of like the different conjugations that you guys can use, which is, you know, that's that's all fine and dandy. I, I expect this from most textbooks, so that's good. I'm happy they included that. Um, but if you look at how they even organized, like this is the English to Japanese side. So you can see that there's a letter from like the English side. It's like G, so you have gallery, garbage, gas station, and then, you know, what it is on this side. Uh, no kanji, no kana, only romanji and English and pronunciation, which is fine, I guess. I don't like that. I, in fact, I really don't like that if I'm being completely honest with you guys. Uh, but check this out. This Let's go to the Japanese to English. So these are Japanese words organized by English letter, which already makes me kind of sad. And still, no Japanese here. So there are negatives to this. I'm not saying that this is like a perfect book by any means, but again, Having these kanjis probably won't help my aunt when she's traveling to Tokyo. As a casual traveler, like if you guys are studying Japanese hard and maybe your parents want to go to Japan just to see what you're talking about, you can study hard with maybe the Genki One books and then keep going, uh, but maybe your parents just want to, you know, understand a little bit of stuff. Be able to order a beer, be able to go to somewhere. This is this is a great book for them, and especially for the price. It'll definitely help them, you know, on a, a week or two week trip where they're just kind of looking around and seeing stuff and trying to be a, a weeb IRL. And if that isn't what this channel is about, then I don't know what is. Do, 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 do. So, did it meet your expectations? Did it exceed your expectations? Did you guys kind of come in with sort of the same vibe that I had dealing with this book? Hopefully this isn't the knitting book. This is the Japanese book. That wasn't a gag, by the way. That was a legitimate mistake. I have tons of baggage when I see this label, this cover. I'm sure it's because the Elven for Dummies really let me down. But after all, I thoroughly enjoyed it for what it was. And I definitely will keep one of these on my shelves for the future Chad Zimmerman that I meet that's like, Chad, I would love 
to study the language and go over there, but I don't know where to start. This is a great gift that I can do, especially since I'm as broke as probably that future chat is. So if you would like to help me not be broke, I do not have any Amazon affiliate links for this book because it would kind of make me a little bit more biased towards you guys buying the book. So I never include Amazon links. However, if you'd like to support me, there's a whole bunch of ways to. You can subscribe to my channel. I put out a video like this every single week. I live stream on Twitch every single Saturday. Come hang out and, and follow me or subscribe to me on whichever channel or platform is appropriate for you. I also have a Twitter at That's My Chat, a Discord server for Japanese language learners. You can also like this video. Check out all of my other 350 plus other videos. I don't know how many specific Japanese textbook reviews I've done now, but it's gotta be over 15. I also travel to Japan every year. You guys can check out the cool stuff I do over there, here on this channel for free. Who would have guessed? No wonder I'm poor. I'm gonna I'm gonna go make a couple phone calls to the travel channel, but until then, if you'd like to support me financially, which I always appreciate, it is never required, but always appreciative, uh, one of the best ways you can do it is my Patreon link down below. I have a manga club tier that I send you real physical Japanese comic books from Japan in Japanese to your front door for less than a dollar a day. It's available in America and now also in Australia. And here soon, probably Latin America. So if you're in Latin America, go check out the link down below. Other than that, I have my rod company, da 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 There's a thousand ways to support me. All the links are in the description down below. And I think that's enough for now. If I keep plugging stuff, I'm gonna have to edit this longer and I really don't wanna look at my dumb face for eight hours and then have to type a paper till four in the morning. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your viewership. It means a lot to me personally. I will see you guys on Saturday. I'm not sure what we're doing, but I will see you there. Uh, love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.